So today I'm going to talk about a word I cannot even properly pronounce, but nevertheless plays an important role in my life. And that word is synesthesia. I've heard some people say synesthesia, but I'm going to choose synesthesia and follow that pronunciation. It's a very interesting concept for me, but at the same time, it's a little bit ambiguous in the sense that there are at least 70 types, perhaps 80 different types of synesthesia, and they're not exactly the same. So it depends. It does vary from person to person, experience to experience. And I want to talk about my own personal experience as well. But before we do that, let's look at the root, the etymology of the word. And it comes to us from Greek. Basically, what it means is um, there are two components of the word. It means the union of the senses or merging of the senses. In a way, when different parts of your brain with different functions overlap and combine. Actually, there's an interesting theory that says all human beings were synesthetes, uh, a person who has synesthesia or synesthesia is a synesthete. So all, everyone at birth, as babies, toddlers, we were all, uh, in a way, we all showed similar um, features. I, I, I don't want to call it a talent, um, so that's why I'm hesitant about the word. But let's say we were all synesthetes when we were babies or toddlers because at that stage, the human brain does combine lots of different senses. But as we grow up, these are more compartmentalized. Whereas for synesthetes, um, that connection is never broken. What do I mean by that? So for instance, there are synesthetes that can hear colors or see sounds. There are musicians who you know, have experienced this all their lives. There are painters, there are lots of artists actually who have experienced this. One name that immediately springs to mind is Van Gogh. Van Gogh himself, when we read his life, um, when we follow the journey of his you know, um, work as an artist, we do see um, a very clear uh, projection of synesthesia in the sense that he could hear colors and he could see sounds. I'm always amazed by that. So, of course, it's not only Van Gogh. When we look at arts, different disciplines, from David Hockney to Nabokov to Billy Eilish to Duke Ellington, there are lots of singers, artists, visual artists, or sculptures who had um, some type of synesthesia. And lately, I, I have noticed there is a growing discussion, there's a growing conversation about synesthesia. Uh, there are new movies coming out, and that's very exciting. There are also new talks, documentaries, um, and hopefully more books will be written about it. So we need to expand this conversation. We need more research. As a child, I remember very vividly, I have very clear memories of seeing letters with colors, you know, associating letters with certain colors. And in a way, when I was playing with crayons, for me, that... In a, in a way, it meant playing with the alphabet. But um, that, that was very mild, and over the years, it weakened a little bit. But what stayed very vividly with me is a very different type of synesthesia, and I want to talk about that. Um, and I, that's a more lexical, gustatory um, synesthesia in the sense that it connects words with tastes, with flavors. So when I do pronounce certain words, when I read words, actually not certain words, almost all words, uh, when I read, when I hear them, whether it's spoken word or written word, I associate them with different flavors and taste in my mind. I have noticed over the years that most of these flavors come to me from my childhood. So, for instance, there are certain words that I associate, that I associate, identify with the taste of burrage, you know, with the taste of this almond cookies that my grandmother used to make. For instance, the word motherland has a taste. It leaves a different taste in my mouth than the word exile, or than the word love, or than the word literature. And interestingly, this happens to me not only in Turkish, in my mother tongue, but also it happens in Spanish, in English. Sometimes there are certain words from languages that I have no connection with, 
but those words also live leave a taste in my mouth. That taste could be spicy, it could be very sweet, it could be um, sour, it could be bitter, it could almost be metallic. Sometimes it's zesty, almost like a lemony flavor. I mean, in detail, I can describe these flavors. And of course, for a writer, for a storyteller, this could be interesting because literature is one area in which I can share this without people calling me crazy. You know, in your daily life, if you say, oh, this is how your name tastes like, people will think you're bonkers. But when you're writing a story, you can still um, talk about the, the, the flavor of words or you can mix senses and it will be all right. Actually, literature, interestingly, is full of synesthesia in the sense that, for instance, we say her voice was um, melodic, her voice was soft as velvet. You know, what you do there is you're actually mixing two senses. Or we can talk about um, how, how sounds, um, maybe the, the color of sounds, and people will not think that's, that's a very crazy thing to do. So I think in art, in literature, there's more room to talk about synesthesia. But the gist of the matter is, even though there are some people who do not take synesthesia seriously, it is a reality. It does affect many people across the world. Not everyone who has synesthesia has a word for it. Maybe they don't know much about it because one thing that happens is you take it for granted. You think everyone is experiencing it in the same way. Or sometimes you don't even know how to describe it. It can be quite um, difficult to describe, but it is a reality. And for me, it is yet another proof that as human beings, we're so diverse. And instead of being ashamed of that diversity, I'd rather live in a world that celebrates diversity. And I think even though there has been a substantial amount of research, especially in the last decades about synesthesia, I think there's a long, long way to go before we really understand what, what synesthesia is all about. So we need more research, we need more conversations, and we need to talk about this in the public space.